Welcome to this interactive learning guide for healthcare professionals. This guide will provide a general overview of medical oxygen therapy. The material is not designed to supplement or replace any local or current national guidelines for oxygen use, which should always be followed. All humans need oxygen in order to survive, as it is used throughout the cells in our bodies for essential metabolic processes. Oxygen enters the body through the process of inhalation. Ambient air is taken in through the lungs and oxygen diffuses across the alveoli into the bloodstream, where it is circulated around the body to oxygenate the cells. As part of the respiratory process, CO2 is generated as a waste product of cell metabolism and is excreted via the lungs as you breathe out. Medical oxygen therapy is the administration of oxygen at concentrations greater than ambient air, 21%. Oxygen is administered to prevent symptoms or manifestations of hypoxia, which is a deficiency of oxygen. In order to sustain life, oxygen has to be taken from the air we breathe and transported to our cells to be used for essential metabolic processes. Oxygen is carried in the blood by binding with hemoglobin to form oxyhemoglobin in the red blood cells. This reaction is reversible and is affected by levels of carbon dioxide, temperature and pH. The amount of oxygen held by hemoglobin, that is, its saturation level, is normally expressed as a percentage. A maximum of four oxygen molecules combined with each hemoglobin molecule. When all four are bound, the blood is said to be fully saturated. The binding of oxygen with hemoglobin in the blood cells is a reversible reaction. The presence of carbon dioxide reduces the affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen, leading to dissociation of the oxyhemoglobin. The oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve is an important tool for understanding how blood carries and releases oxygen. This plots the proportion of saturated hemoglobin on the vertical axis against the prevailing oxygen tension on the horizontal axis. A right shift indicates that hemoglobin has a decreased affinity for oxygen, so requiring a higher PaO2 to achieve the same oxygen saturation. An increase in carbon dioxide, temperature and diphosphoglycerate and a reduction in pH, acidosis levels, will cause a shift to the right. A left shift indicates that hemoglobin has an increased affinity for oxygen, so that hemoglobin binds oxygen more easily. A decrease in carbon dioxide, temperature and diphosphoglycerate and an increase in pH, alkalosis levels, will cause a shift to the left. The use of oxygen by ambulance staff and other pre-hospital responders has long been established. With access to pulse oximetry, the ambulance crews can administer oxygen in a safe manner, following the British Thoracic Society, BTS, and Joint Royal Colleges Ambulance Liaison Committee, JRCAALC, guidelines for the various emergencies that they have to treat. All emergency ambulances and fast response cars are equipped with oxygen. The ambulance will have oxygen piped from large cylinders stored on board, whilst the fast response cars will have smaller portable cylinders which are easier to handle and move around. Medical gas cylinders should only be handled and operated by those trained to do so. Cylinders come in a variety of different forms, some with integral pressure regulators and others that need a separate regulator to be fitted. The length of time an oxygen cylinder lasts depends on the flow rate setting, so the contents gauge will need to be checked before and during operation to ensure there is sufficient gas for treatment. To view detailed instructions on how to handle medical gas cylinders, click on Resources below or select Free Education on the home page of this website.
Prior to any surgery, the patient would normally have a specific pre-operative assessment, which may include the patient's history of previous and current illness and surgery, whether they have any specific allergies, vital signs measurement such as heart rate, pulse, blood pressure, etc., what medication they are taking, any relevant blood tests if necessary. Pulse oximetry and ECG tests may also be conducted. At the same time, the operative procedures and expectations will also be explained to the patient. Many hospitals are moving towards an integrated care pathway, single patient record, where all details are recorded throughout the patient's stay. There are a wide range of clinical conditions that normally require some form of oxygen therapy in the hospital or home setting. Oxygen may be needed either in an acute phase of the disease or in the longer term chronic phase. The most common conditions are listed here. The slides that follow provide a brief overview of each condition and treatment. This is not meant to be a detailed explanation of each disease, nor is it a substitute for any national or local treatment protocols which will always take precedence. If more information is required, then further reading will need to be undertaken. All statistics are accurate at the time of writing, but may be based on figures from 2005 onwards.